This video is an inspiration from a comment I got on my video titled Java 6 using for loops to get user to, to get multiple user input. The comment says, what if I don't want just four numbers, but any amount that the user decides to enter? The thing is, I don't want to ask the user how many inputs they would like to input. I want them to just be able to type in as many as they want. So I thought probably the closest thing to my um, to the comment that I got on my chat on my video was probably to actually use the split method. And so let's go ahead and demonstrate this in this video. And thanks for the great question. Uh, I hope you will find this video useful. So we will start off by creating our scanner object and store it into our scanner reference variable. Let's first import our scanner. Oh, it's actually already there, so that's good. And let's start off by declaring our reference variable named input and creating a new instance of our scanner class, indicating that entry is coming in from the user's key keyboard. And so that's what it is. What we want to do now is we want to ask the user to enter a string. But let's first declare and initialize a string variable called user entry. So I'll type string and let's give it an empty string. And then what we want is we want to ask the user to enter the numbers as a string separated by the space. And once the user is done with entering the, the number, hit enter. So I thought this could probably be something close to the comment that I got asked in this question. So let's first ask the user. So using system dot out dot print line, let's ask the user to enter uh, multiple numbers. Uh, let me learn how to spell. Give me a minute. And uh, we want them to separate them, separ uh, separate it by by spaces, basically spaces. And then once they are finished, we ask them to hit enter to to stop. Okay, I'm doing great with my typing today. Right. So let's put in whatever the user enters into this string variable. So using the scanner reference, we will use the next line method. Right. And then and then that's it. Initially, let's print out what the user has entered before we do anything further. So using system dot out dot print line, let's say entry is and then basically uh, sorry, user entry. Let's run it and see what we get initially. It's always good to test a few things. So in this big line, let me just make this a little bit bigger. So if I say um, four, three, five, six, and so on, it's it's just it will keep on going until I hit enter, and that entry is basically a big string separated by, and it's got spaces. So part of the string is also the spaces. Okay. So now what we want to do is using an array of string. So let's create a string array, uh, an array of strings. And uh, we'll call it numbers. I know it's still a string, but we'll call it numbers for now. Now, the result of splitting this this string series of numbers using the array of string, the results of splitting this string series of numbers, I'm, I don't know what I meant there, but entered by the user, all oh, right, are saved into the array. Okay, so this is how the split method works. Let's just first type it in. So we'll say user entry dot split. And we need to indicate what we want to, what the delimiter of splitting is. So uh, probably would, I've got a spelling mistake there. So I don't know how to spell delimiter. I'll oh, probably like that. Okay. So the delimiter in my case, I'd like that to be the space because that's what we used or what the user has used to separate the numbers. Okay. What does this mean? Now the split method, what it will do is it'll return a series of strings, uh, sorry, a series of numbers that were entered by the user uh, into this array, but it will get rid of all the spaces. So the spl split method will split the string into multiple into multiple ones, as in multiple strings, using a specified delimiter. In our case, we are using the space. All right. 
Now we can find the length of the array using the length property and we want to store the size of the array into an integer variable because we are planning to use that multiple times. So we'll call it numbers uh, length and then that'll be numbers dot length. Okay. Now let's declare our sum variable here before the loop starts and initialize it to zero. Now our sum is going to be a double and it's going to equal to zero. We can now loop through the array created as a result of the split method. We can now loop through the array. So after we've done the split, this is actually an array. So let's have a look at what the array looks like. So at index, start off with zero. We don't need a counter or you can previously we used a counter. We can use the same counter, but I think index makes more sense in this program. Index plus plus. We don't need to, um, we actually don't need the the counter because previously we used the counter to use that to calculate our average. But because we've actually stored the size of the array from the length property, we don't need to um, really use the counter. For that case, index will only be visible within within only this scope, which is which is enough in our case. Okay, now to see the value of the array, let's print out the results. So we can actually display number uh, plus, we can say index pl uh, plus, we concatenate and concatenate further. We can access every number that was entered in our array. Okay, I think I need one more bracket there. Oh, no, I don't, I don't. Let's run it and let's see what we get. So if I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we get the entry, that part is basically just plain string. And then this part here is, okay, so it's it's at index zero, I've got one, two, three, four. If you want for visibility or for the user to see this in a better way, you can always increment it one. And we can say number one is, you know, our value or whatever. So let's try that again. Looks probably a little bit better now. So we get number one is one, two, three. So we can access each one from the array. But now let's do the math. So we've got, we can access each number now using the value to store into sum. But because sum is a double, we'll need to pass our value into double or integers, depending on your program. For us, let's go with, uh, with double. So we will add to sum. Now we've already declared sum and give it, gave it a value of zero. So we can't really do this. So we can't say numbers and take the index and just add that because this is actually the value sitting here is actually a string. Although it looks like a number, but it's still being declared as a string. So we can uh, pass that into a double using the wrapper class and pass double method. And that's our sum. Okay. Now over here, we can now find the average. It's sum divided by the number. Let's first def de um, define our average. Sorry, declare the average. So average is equal to sum divided by the length of numbers of the array, but that's been stored into this variable. So we can just directly use that one. So sum divided by this value. We can then display the average using the printf method. And we can say the average uh, average is, and then we want that um, displayed to two decimal, decimal places. And we'll mention the average here. Finally, we will close our scanner using input.close, just good practice. Otherwise, programs still work. Let's see what we have. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six so our average is 3.5 and of course the program will actually work with whatever series of numbers you give you can just keep on going um, forever uh, no not forever but like you know whenever you're done just hit enter and the program will uh, still work as expected 
stay tuned in the next video we're going to make changes and split using a comma so i'll see you then